Income inequality is the topic of heated discussion in the United States. And now, researchers have used de-identified federal income tax returns and death records to better understand if differences in income are associated with differences in life expectancy at age 40. They report that men in the top percentile of household income lived almost 15 years longer than those in the lowest, and women in the top percentile of household incomes lived about 10 years longer than those in the lowest. Women lived longer than men at any percentile, with a six-year advantage among the poorest 1%, diminishing to a one-and-a-half-year advantage for the wealthiest. Despite differences at the highest and lowest percentiles, gains in life expectancy became much less above a mean household income of about $200,000. Life expectancy at age 40 increased over the 14-year study period, an average of about three years for men and women in the top income quartile, compared to an average of about one year for those in the bottom quartile. The infamous 1% is not only richer, but much healthier, writes Nobel laureate Angus Deaton in an accompanying editorial. Individuals in the top 1% of income have 10 to 15 more years to enjoy their richly funded lives and to spend time with their children and grandchildren, and they're pulling away from everyone else. Where people live makes a difference. Life expectancy at age 40 was about six and a half years less for the poorest men in Detroit compared to New York City, and it was about five years less for the poorest women in Detroit compared to New York City, between city differences that largely disappeared at the highest incomes. Nevada, Indiana, and Oklahoma had the lowest life expectancies. California, New York, and Vermont had the highest. People in the top income quartile were expected to live longest in Salt Lake City and die younger in Las Vegas, while those in the bottom income quartile were expected to live longest in New York City and die youngest in Gary, Indiana. By contrast, people in the top income quartile gained the most life expectancy over the study period in El Paso, Texas, and lost the most in Lakeland, Florida, while those in the bottom quartile gained the most in Toms River, New Jersey, and lost the most in Tampa, Florida. It's as if the top income percentiles belong to one world, the world of the elite wealthy U.S. adults, whereas the bottom income percentiles each belong to separate worlds of poverty, each unhappy and unhealthy in its own way, writes Deaton. Health behaviors like smoking, exercise, and obesity were highly correlated with differences in life expectancy across areas, the researchers write, and they suggest that lower income individuals do better in more affluent cities, with highly educated populations and high levels of government expenditures, like New York City and San Francisco. Other explanations for the observations include reverse causality, meaning poor health causes reduced income rather than the other way around, parental rather than personal income, and education. Deaton concludes, the next step is to extend the analysis by including education to advance the understanding of factors underlying the relationship between income and life expectancy. Lead author Raj Chetty concludes, we should really be thinking not just at a national level, but also at a local level about how to address life expectancy and health, because there really are big differences across places, and we should be thinking about how to change health behaviors in places like Gary, Indiana, focusing on the poor.